Welcome to another installment of TCA Remote Learning. This is Miguel Gulen, and I just want to remind you that you can find all of these exciting videos at tcea.org forward slash remote learning. Now, my name is Miguel Gulen, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, I'm a director of professional development for tcea.org. Reach out to me on Twitter at mglearn if you have any questions, or call me on my 1 800 number, 800. 282-8232. I look forward to, to hearing from you. So what are we talking about today? Today we're going to be exploring digital audiobooks for free. There is so much wonderful content that has become available just in a very short time to support teachers who are engaged in remote teaching. Uh, so remote learning uh, support is here for you. What we're going to be doing is taking a quick look at some of the resources that you can use to uh, reach out to kids and to sort of keep them reading and engaged um, during their time at home. So we're, we'll also take a quick look at something called reciprocal teaching. We won't have too much time to go into it, but I, I think it's a wonderful strategy that you can introduce kids to. Uh, and, and use and we recently had a lunch and learn um, webinar that you can watch that has 30 minutes of great content that you can explore and dig deeper. So let's uh, explore some uh, research very quickly. One of the tools that uh, I'll be sharing with you today is uh, ListenWise and it has a nice collection of research. They've got white papers, case studies, and everything else, but some of the quick points that they made were that listening comprehension is a fundamental building block to reading comprehension development. So think about that. You need to be able to listen before you can, it, well, not before, but it is a, a key component. In fact, um, now there's research that says students that are able to listen to stories, the same kind of uh, processing that goes on in their head is, this, is you get the same result when you're actually reading a text, a book, uh, or a, a story in a magazine, or, or something like that. So when you, we, we can't, uh, we can no longer really say, oh, listening to a story is not as good as reading a story in a book, because you do get the same result. And that's what we're looking for. We want kids to make those mental images and um, engage in some metacognition as they go through that. So the, uh, as you look, one of the problems that, that we uh, often encounter um, is one that we'll sort of talk about a little bit now. And so the problem is, uh, you know, as librarians, as educators, it's difficult for us to record uh, content uh, using copyrighted materials. We all have access to fantastic books. In fact, I was chatting with my wife, who's a second grade teacher, and she um, said, do we have any books in our library that I could read to my kids? And I said, uh, yeah, there's three. Uh, so those were three that we had. She has a lot of books, but only three that were uh, age appropriate and could be used for this particular task. So um, I guess this really raises the question, where can we find amazing content? Now, there are a lot of ebook providers out there that we can take advantage of uh, that are written or printed ebooks. And in fact, if you were to go to the TCA blog and do just a quick search on remote learning, I'm just going to do that quick search right now, a quick search on remote learning, you'd find a whole list of resources for remote learning for kids. And uh, this, this blog is updated periodically, but uh, you'll you'll see a lot of great contents. For example, Amazon Prime video free family titles and even more. But what we don't necessarily always find out there is audiobooks. But we do have access to a, to some content, and I wanted to share a few solutions with you uh, in the time that we have together uh, and quickly go over these. So. One of the challenges that, that we face is finding nonfiction audio sources that children can listen to. Sure, there's tons of great content online and available, 
but unfortunately there is uh, it's hard to get to find and get a hold of it so uh, listen wise has stepped into the gap and they're a web-based resource and they provide three to six minute podcast lessons from nonfiction storytellers and they include listening comprehension quizzes for your classroom so you, once you join them uh, you'll get access to their library of nonfiction podcasts and in the teacher dashboard uh, you can actually search for content so if you wanted to you can find news about COVID-19 as well as other feature stories now there is a premium version of listen wise and that one includes uh, English language arts social studies and science podcasts at a cost so that means that you you will have to pay for it if if you decide to to continue with it but when you first sign up as a teacher you get a 30-day free trial um, and I bet if you reached out to them and told them hey I'm a teacher working with kids at home uh, they might might extend it I don't know if, if they've done that or not um, so when you log in you with your account uh, this is just a quick screenshot of it you'll see there's a teacher dashboard notice that you have your current events um, that are here and again you can start your 30-day free trial uh, all of these um, I believe the current events are available for free but there's also lessons down here at the bottom uh, and more so for example I decided to check out a current event uh, broadcast it's the eSports explosion and, and you can see the description says several universities are offering students the chance to major in a subject unheard of just a few years ago so let me open that in a fresh tab and let's switch over to it as you can see we're looking actually straight at this listen wise and I think this is a great um, way to engage with audio uh, especially with nonfiction you if you think about it uh, the work of Tony Stead how nonfiction is really what we deal with quite a bit even more so than than fiction uh, but you can click on listen to the story So I don't know if you were, you actually were able to hear that uh, fantastic audio, but um, it may sound like a familiar voice. And uh, this four minute and 26 second story is actually sourced from National Public Radio and used with permission of NPR. So uh, that's pretty amazing uh, that you have access to such high quality reporting and content for nonfiction in your current events. So Esports Explosion is just one of the many titles that are available. Um, I encourage you to uh, check it out. Notice that uh, ListenWise also has down here uh, a commitment or made a commitment to the student privacy pledge. They're a signatory on that and that's a pretty important uh, commitment because um, it's very easy to lose access to student data. So student, the student privacy pledge means that they will safeguard your students information. So definitely check out uh, ListenWise. Uh, sharing uh, ListenWise stories like the one we just listened to is very easy. You'll notice that you can, of course, copy and paste the link, this link up here at the top. Um, but you can also share that link to your Google Classroom. So it has built-in support for Google Classroom. So for those of you that use that, hey, that's pretty fantastic. Uh, there's more information about uh, premium features and class codes and things like that. You can also assign quizzes and customize assignments. So there's a lot more that ListenWise can do, but it will cost you some money. So uh, definitely check it out and uh, if you're looking for that kind of content. Now one of my favorite uh, audiobook uh, sellers is Audible. And uh, I can tell you I've listened to Audible daily pretty much for the last four years since I discovered them. There's a lot of free audio content online, but not all of it is age appropriate uh, for our students. And Audible is a great resource to use. In fact, this is the uh, resource I shared with my wife when she was uh, looking for a story to send out to her students. She wanted them to listen to it and then uh, her second grade students and reflect on the beginning, middle, and the end. I think there's a, there are other strategies that we can use as well. Uh, 
especially as we get it start working with older children third grade and above um, like reciprocal teaching that would lend themselves to use with this uh, very well especially if you have parent support uh, one of the key points here is that no login is required that is a fantastic feature for audible um, I'm going to go ahead and just open that up and uh, when you get to the Audible Stories uh, website, you can just click on Start Listening. And this is sort of the, the main page. It's called a Discovery page. And you can see right up here at the top, there's a variety of categories, such as Littlest Listeners, Elementary, Tween, Teen, Literary Classics, Folk and Fairy Tales for All. And then, if that wasn't enough, you can also find them in French, Dutch, and Spanish, and Italian. And I'm not sure what language that is. So either Chinese or Japanese, not quite sure. So uh, you are you have access to quite a bit of content and uh, that's multilingual, age appropriate, and organized in different ways. So these stories uh, vary. Some of these are, are open source, and you'll see them these titles time and again, like Anne of Green Gables, which has fallen into sort of public domain. But then there are quite a few others that are here. I can't tell you how excited I'd be to have access to all of this content um, as a student, as a parent, um, to share and to use in the classroom. So as you can see, we can come down here. There's even titles. I think I passed up the Spanish ones. Uh, here are the Spanish ones. Uh, this one's on sharks and dolphins. Uh, the history of uh, Campiona or champion. Uh, and then uh, a few other titles here. Now there, are, you can see that just like when you're looking at something like Netflix where you can come over and click on the, there are more to, to come. So if we click on see more, we can actually get a full page of fairy tales. So here we can find Aesop's Fables, Why the Spider Has a Thin Waist, um, Why Koala Has a Stumpy Tail. If I click on Why Koala Has a Stumpy Tail, you can, uh, you can see this is a four minute uh, long story. And uh, if I click on Start Listening, uh, it will play. Now notice the play controls down here. I can read faster, slower, whatever it takes. So it starts out with uh, Koala and Tree Kangaroo being good friends. You're just dying to know what's going to happen next. So uh, what's neat is you can also provide a direct link uh, to this. You can take a quick screenshot of why Koala has a stumpy tail, drop it into Seesaw, or maybe just drop the link direct to why Koala has a stumpy tail into your seesaw and students will be able to listen to that. Uh, definitely check this out. It's one of my favorite um, sources of audio stories. Now another one is Story Nori and this offers really stories and uh, tales in video format. Uh, you can also get as an iOS or Android app which is kind of awesome. Um, they also have a YouTube channel, so if you, if your parents or you or your parents have access to Roku um, or one of those uh, solutions, they can stream this on their TV and actually see that. So, for example, uh, there's the Tiger poem. It's read by Jane Elizabeth. This is the famous William Blake poem, Tiger, Tiger. So you can hear there's a little bit uh, dramatic reading there um, for you. And of course, Story Nori, you can go to their website and you'll be able to access lots of content. Um, and of course, I've highlighted the fairy tales aspect here, uh, but you can, you can just come over and click on that and you'll be able to see quite a bit. Solution number four, which I want to share with you, is uh, free stories from David Walliams. There's not a lot of content there yet, but over the next... Uh, you'll probably start to see a few titles popping up. They're going to be dropping uh, um, some for the next 30 days, and that starts in March. 
end of March. So by April of 2020, there should be some content up there. But right now, you can start off with Listen to Grubby Gertrude. There's also uh, books that have fallen into the public domain. You remember I mentioned Anne of Green Gables is one of the popular titles. And you can find that online uh, over at Loyal Books, along with lots of other audio titles. You can also take a stab at making your own. I've expanded on that in a blog entry that you can read. Um, it's really about uh, going from Google Docs to audiobooks. Kind of uh, cool if you want to get students to collaborate on developing a book and then putting it together. Uh, and then they would be able to turn that into an audiobook uh, that could be read. Let's talk a little bit about reciprocal teaching. I'm not going to spend too much time on this strategy, but I wanted to introduce you to it. It has a great effect size of 0.74. That means that it's almost two years of uh, growth in one year. And what's neat about reciprocal teaching is that the benefits endure past the time that students practice it. So really, if you do reciprocal teaching from now until the end of the school year, um, the next eight weeks, your students are going to get a significant bump in their reading comprehension that's going to endure through the summer months and into the new school year. That's really fantastic. Reciprocal teaching breaks down into these four strategies, predicting, clarifying, questioning, and summarizing. I'm not going to spend a lot of time modeling it or showing it to you because there's some fantastic videos already doing that. And this is one of the best ones here at the top and then followed by the second one down here. Uh, I've included some suggestions and best practices and I would encourage you to look at uh, number three under best practices and think of it as the teacher being the parent. If, the, if your parents are able to, you can do this. Otherwise, you can model uh, the four strategies and then um, use this with your audio text, well, excuse me, with your audiobooks as well as with text. So definitely uh, give that a shot and, and try it out. I hope that uh, these solutions will uh, provide some great digital audio uh, sources for you to use, especially when you're engaging students at home and connecting. Thank you so much for um, uh, listening uh, and watching this uh, particular webinar. Remember, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. My Twitter address is at mglearn. You can reach out to my email or uh, call me on my phone. Actually, send me a text first before you call because I'll want to uh, field that call. Thank you again. Take care.